Hello, everyone. My name is Joanne C. Benson. I'm a senator in the 24th Legislative District of Prince George's County. I'm very pleased and happy and delighted and excited to be sitting here uh, today with uh, Delegate Faye Martin Howell, uh, who is currently with the uh, 24th Legislative District team. She is serving in Annapolis and is going to be reelected uh, to the House of Delegates uh, in June. So we are very, very happy that to be with her this afternoon. I had the wonderful pleasure of working uh, with her mother and father in the civil rights movement. Uh, they were warriors. Uh, they were the people who laid the groundwork for a successful county. Uh, it's just been a genuine pleasure to be a part of the Martin family. So at this point, I would like to introduce and to many of you and present uh, Delegate Faye Martin Howell, who will talk just a little bit about herself and her background. Well, thank you, Senator Benson. I appreciate that introduction. My name is Faye Martin Howell, and I'm a lifelong resident of Prince George's County. I've uh, lived in the community that I was born in. I've, I've lived there for the past 69 years. And um, I'm glad to be a part of that. My background is I started out as a school teacher. I taught math to middle school children for a couple of years. And then I moved on to the federal government. I worked for the Environmental Protection Agency for 33 years and I retired. And since my retirement until this appointment, I was raising, helping to raise my grandchildren and just tutoring and helping out in the community. Can you just tell us a little bit, uh, your, your parents are, are celebrating the 100th centennial heavenly birthday. How do you think you could take lessons from what they laid as far as the groundwork is concerned for Prince George's County? What lessons have you learned? In the 70s, both of them were leaders. One, my mother was working for the Board of Education. She was the chair of the board, and my father was the president of the NAACP. And they were on opposite sides of busing. But every night, you know, we would have dinner, and they would talk about, you know, the issues that were going on. But in the end, they still were friends. They stayed married. They stayed married until his death in 2001. And I just appreciated and learned from them that even though you may have differences, you have to respect each other and work them out. I also learned that um, if you believe in something, it's a good thing to just fight for it. Fight for it if you think it's right. And also that together we can make a difference. I remember working on some, a lot of things in the county with the Washington now commanders. When they first came to this area, we work, I work with the Glen Arden Track Club and a lot of other officials to make sure that uh, we would get something in return for the, for the Redskins team, well, commander's team coming here. And um, I learned then that if you, if you want to fight for something, you need to fight but respect each other. And also, if you believe it's right, fight to the end. So I think my biggest lessons were learning to fight for what you think is right, look to the future, see what's going to be good. I also have 10 grandchildren, so, um, I always look to the future. They help me to stay focused on the future and, and to try to get things that are right for the children. Uh, you were appointed uh, to the House of Delegates in December of 2021. Has this position been somewhat of a surprise? Is it what you expected? Um, what are some of the things that, uh, that you feel uh, you will be able to accomplish as a result of being in the legislature? Well, I think the first thing was that I was glad and I appreci appreciated the, the uh, opportunity to be appointed. It gives me a better look at the House and what, what it all encompasses. I feel that people tend to think that the politicians are down there not doing as much as they can, but I'm there with them and I see that the politicians are working, working hard for a lot of things. There are a lot of issues and we have to take everybody, look at our constituents and take into, um, take into understand what they need and try to do something that's gonna help them 
to get what, what's needed. So the politicians, the people in the House, they're working hard. We're down there night and day doing things to pass bills that will help us. And hopefully, I'm learning that I, I'm liking this. So I'm just wondering at this point in time, do you see yourself standing out, being very different from those folks who are interested in pursuing uh, a position in the House of Delegates? Well, Senator, I think the one thing that I can offer is that I'm honest. That's number one. I have a lot of integrity, and I care about folks. You know, I'm not doing this because I want my name to be in the limelight or anything like that. I have integrity. There are things that I believe in. There are things that I will not do. And I just think that my honesty, my integrity, my caring about other people will help me to win this position. I've been doing it many, many years, over 40 years, just trying to work to get what people need. And I think that that's a, a critical point right now. So, like I said, the best thing I can do is offer my honesty, my integrity, and my caring for people. Well, the other thing, too, is you, you have grandchildren. Yeah. You have nieces and nephews. You have a family. You, you know, the Fletcher family, the Martin family. You have people who are really depending on you to step up to the plate to make the difference. And you are also, I have said over and over again, that you are paving the way for future generations, for your 10 grandchildren and for your family. And so uh, when you think about the legacy of Barbara and Clint Martin, you have, picked up, you have picked up the baton and you are moving it forward. And that's exactly what we need. And we need it for a time such as this. Yeah. And so I really want to say thank you so much for agreeing to not just serve in the House of Delegates as of uh, December the 21st, but also your desire to continue to serve. Because you, as you have said, you have a track record. Your track record speaks for itself. Doing things so unselfishly. I mean, you're not being paid to deal with the track team, Glen Arden track team, but you keep on doing it. You travel all over the country taking these little children, talking to children, talking to families, talking to friends, helping our kids to stay out of trouble. And that is very commendable. So we really want to thank you uh, for the work that you do. Thank you. And I, I want to just say, too, that I appreciate being a part of this team. I've known Senator Benson for many, many years. She's been a mentor to me. And um, there's nothing that I wouldn't do for her. But this is not all for her. This is because this is what I want to do. And I just want to say thank you. I, I appreciate being a part of this team. And if I didn't feel that they had integrity, I would not be a part of this team. Well, thank you very much for that.